Rick well, built too, and we got um, a collection of folks here. So why don't we start as chair of the Rochester Select Board? I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20 and act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Um, we're providing public access to the meeting um, using the Zoom platform and you can find out how to connect with that meeting by either looking at the posted agendas around town, going to the town website or requesting um, an email um, notification from the town clerk. And anyway, we're um, here we are and I would like to invite anyone that has any additions to the agenda to, to um, um, bring them up now if we could. And hearing none, uh, we'll move on to the um, the minutes. We the um, last meeting we could not confirm the meetings for the December fourteenth uh, meeting because we didn't have them. So I looked over those now, and they look correct to me. So did, do you guys have any corrections or no? I, I do. Don't. Page two of those uh, minutes from twelve fourteen. Yep. Um, apparently says that Joan noted how we are moving forward on the Mount Cushman project and I think it, it should be how we are not, not moving for yeah okay yeah, I saw that too you're right yep you could clarify that um, um, Frank and he's still gonna try we're still gonna try it's just um it's yep. kind of um it's just tabled for a little bit table exactly all right, so I'd move to approve those <coughs> with that, that correction. I second it. All in favor? All, All right. right. All right. Okay, got someone else coming into the meeting. And then we go into the minutes for the, the birthday meeting on December 28th. And I found those to be complete and clear. And I'd, um, if you guys don't have any corrections to those, I'd move to approve those minutes. I'll yeah, second, I second that. that. Or yep. Pat can, I don't care. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, hello, Catherine. I see you um, just got in. We were, um, um, I'd asked earlier if anyone had any additions to the agenda, and which there were none, but I'd, I'd give you the same opportunity to, to add something if you wanted to. I wanted to sort of update about the mm -hmm. high school building and What's going on with that? Okay. Hey, Dune, I met, to, I was on mute. I was going to say, I just want to give a rundown of the town meeting schedule. Yeah, <laughs> great. Yeah. Um, just some dates and that are important to the community. I've got them listed down here. Great. Thank you, Frank. Yep. So, um, So we get to, so let's um why don't we um why don't we start with that Frank because that's kind of an important thing that's coming up and uh, a lot of people are curious about that. Okay, the the rundown for town meeting is uh, Tuesday, January twelfth, which is tomorrow, is the last day for signed petitions, and then Monday, January eighteenth, is the last day for consent forms at 5 p.m. Julie's going to be open all day that day. And then Wednesday, January 20th is the first day that we can post the warning. And Friday, January 29th is the last day we can post the warning. February, uh, Friday, February 19th is the last day to mail out the town reports. And Friday, February 19th, the Warren Virtual Info Information Meetings that can be addressed on February 22nd. And we felt that we needed two informational meetings on that. And I, it's up to the board here to figure out if we wanna do it because we have a regular scheduled meeting on the 22nd. 
And I prefer not to do it on a regular scheduled meeting. I'd rather see a couple of uh, meetings. And some of the other stuff I didn't put out to the public only because they're, they're uh, the town report stuff that we have to do in house. Um, and that's about it. Now, maybe Nancy has something she wants to address there. Yeah, Nancy. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Um, the informational meetings have to be warned uh, in advance of those meetings, um, like around the 20th and no later than the 20th. Right. That's what I said. So we need to we need to have them properly warned, which would be I have my calendar here, February for February 22nd, we would be probably warning it at around the 16th. And if you do another one that week of the 15th, we would have to warn it um, probably around the 9th. Excuse me, I'm confused as to did you just, did, is there a meeting on the 22nd or, or what? I mean, I know there's a regular meeting, regular select there's board a regular meeting. select board meeting on the 22nd. Um, what Frank was recommending is that we have the informational meetings for the um, the town non-meeting and separate from the regular select board meeting. So there are meetings specifically focused on that, that on that. So topic. are you, are, is the board deciding on those dates tonight? Um, I think they're pretty well set. The 22nd is what used to be the pre-town meeting. It's one week before when we'll be voting. I, I think we should probably set those a little bit later because um, we have a regular meeting on the 22nd and then warn them for the week of the 22nd sometime during that week. We can but pick well, a date. But are, you picking, are you picking out the dates now so people will know ahead of time? We haven't be... discussed those yet, Martha. Okay, so thank you. that'll Sorry, be a board that. decision. Now, one of the issues is since people cannot be nominated from the floor at a normal meeting, um, if they want to run for an office, um, maybe um, we want to have a, a meeting a little bit earlier to, so this is all really clear to people and, and they don't feel like this is um, too compressed in, to, in terms of the time frame. Doon? Yeah. Um, the people that complete the consent form by five o'clock on the 18th, their names will be printed on the ballot. Anyone else can be considered a write-in. And there'll be lines on the ballot to accommodate the write-ins. Okay, so there will be write-ins. Well, that will kind of satisfy the, the possibility of a, um, a nomination from the floor, I guess it would have it. So, now, is it, um, do we need to have an earlier meeting before the 18th so that that is clear to people that that's, that's the deadline that, that I, I would suggest that you have something that, that week of the 15th. That makes sense to me. It, it would not be um, very nice to hold a meeting to say, oh, the, the deadline was last it week. Was. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I think, I think we should post it around town and also put it on the on the computer there, the front page forum and and all that. It's, yep. every, it's out everywhere. If anybody is looking around or listening, it's it's in print everywhere for the consent forms. So in terms of the um, the informational meetings, um, we, can't really, we can't have them until we get the town reports back. True. So, so those so will be the week of the February 22nd. So we just have to pick a couple days for that, a couple nights. And we could do two meetings that week. Right. So what's your pleasure on that? Let's Whatever day you want. So we're, if we already have a select board meeting that, I don't have a calendar in front of me. Who's, it's who's, the 22nd. It's Monday, yeah, that, Monday is the 22nd, yes. Okay, Monday's the 22nd. 
You don't and, have to announce that right now. No, no, we can wait on that and we can figure it out, talk about it if you want. Um, I just wanted something to put in my article. Could I just say the meetings will be uh, the week of the 22nd with date to be confirmed soon? I wouldn't do that yet. You've got another select board meeting on the 25th but of people, January. People will want to know. Oh, okay. Fine. Yeah, we can have the dates ready by then. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thanks. But we can't have informational meetings until we have the town report. Right, oh. exactly. That's a good okay, point. Okay, I'll just say the dates of the information meetings will be decided at the next select board meeting. There we go. So the um, February 19th is the, the deadline for the reports to be mailed. Is it possible that we can have them sent out before then? Only if they, they'll go out the day they come back from the printer. Right, right. So that's all I can tell you. I'm, I would not ever give you a date, except they no. will be in the mail by the 19th. Yep. We have, to, we have to have all that stuff delivered to the printer by the 21st of January. Yeah, the, the town report will, is, will go to the printer on the, at least by the 21st. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, we're on, on line to um, approve the, um, the proposed budget tonight. So that's, um, we're, um, we're in good shape for getting that information to them. Um, what are we, uh, when is the deadline for appropriations is what, tomorrow? Uh, that's, that's tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me just um, do this button. Okay, um, Frank, thanks for being on top of the all the scheduling around this, and you, Nancy. Um, so, I guess I'll follow the um, agenda down here. Joan, um, welcome this evening. What have you got for us tonight? Uh, just one item I need to discuss with uh, the select board, and that is um, the, uh, maybe you saw the email I sent last Thursday, I think it was about uh, informa getting information to uh, Chris Bump at VTrans regarding the Route 100 paving. Right. Uh, we were able to get there <laughs> to uh, the trouble spots and um, they want more in, like more information uh, so they can go take a look at them. As I said in the email, um, ordinarily, of course, they would do it with someone from the town, uh, but these days they're, they're prohibited from doing that. So they'd like me to send them some information and be more specific, a little more, you know, we have to give them a lot of detail, but more specific about exactly where these trouble spots are. And uh, I, you know, maybe do a GPS point and a little description of what's been happening and for how long. And then they will come out and take a look at things and get back to us and probably schedule uh, a Zoom meeting for us to discuss them. Um, I did find out also that isn't quite, well, while they're getting into design phase now, I don't think they're very far into it. And um, he was able to describe the work they're gonna do, it's simply, a new layer of asphalt, new layer of pavement. They're not going to grind and, and redo it. No, no, it's it's, uh, a patch no, it's job. not. A, it's a patch job. Well, yeah, basically, it's a patch job. Um, Joan, did I hear correctly? This is Route 100 you're talking about. That's right. Okay, That's right. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, and the paving work is actually not going to be done until uh, 2022, but I guess it takes this long to put things together. Uh, whatever those things are. So uh, I wanted to find how, how find out how you wanted to address putting together these um, trouble spots. I'm uh, more than willing to come in, walk around with Cooter if you'd like me to do that and put together the information or if you want to do it some other way. Um, I want to make sure that I had all of the sites that I've heard from you um, in previous meetings. So uh, can I do that? I just list them. Got one, two, three, four. Uh, you can tell me if there are any more. One is uh, somewhere between Pierce Hall and the library, maybe that whole stretch, or is it a specific spot within that area? That in terms of puddling of water? Yeah, ponding, whatever the problem. Ponding, right, right. It 
So is yeah. That yeah, no, that's that's been a the... been a um, problem. Plus, with a lot of a um, lot of traffic in through there. Okay, so it's the entire stretch between Pierce Hall and and the library entrance. It's um, yeah, basically. I mean, whatever. Okay. Um, that's that's where the issue seems to to happen. <laughs> Well, the issue is there there about the crosswalk um uh, crosswalk is in that crosswalk is, is that in is that in the section there the crosswalk is south of the the crosswalk is south of the library uh-huh the pool but is, is at, the, at the area that comes right down their steps onto route 100. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, is it, it's more than, it's ponding, but it's also safety? Um, yeah, um, basically with the, just the, the ice that builds up there over and over because of the, there's no drainage. Yeah, okay. So there's no drain there now. It's not like there's one that's non-functional or something. There's nothing there now. I don't think so. I think okay. you can talk to Pierce Hall too. Yeah, that'd, that'd be. And you're outside. Sorry. Sorry. Tim, did you have a, something to say about that? <laughs> nope. Okay. Bark. Okay. Bark. Yeah. Um, that's true. That, that someone at Pierce Hall would, I, I think that um, talking sure. to um, Pierce Hall and, and the folks at the library, they'd have the, I mean, they're walking there every day. They, they know what the, um, okay. Do they did a, a repaving job in front of this all the little driveway and everything? Did that have any effect on where Waterwood Pond and everything? No. They, no. Okay. I, don't think so. I haven't noticed. I just wanted you to talk to Bruce. Bruce. Yeah. Okay. And then the next one is Sandy's. I know where that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's a long time thing, right? That's been like that. That, for, that is. Yeah. Yeah. For forever. Brought that up to. To them a few times. In fact, I had a conversation with Chris Bump this last week and um right, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. And what were the other two sites that you had? Um yeah, just taking notes here. Um then there was a sinkhole due to a uh B trans storm drain somewhere between the skip mark and Sandy's and Chris knew about that. He did say that they had done some work there. They had fixed it and it was a bigger job than they expected because it wasn't just the drain. It was a section of pipe they had to replace, which they don't ordinarily do. Um, but in any case, I think I heard the last meeting that there was still a problem there. Is that correct? No, wait, you just, I mean, that's the same spot that we're talk, we were just talking about between the- No, 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 this is um, not right in front of Sandy's and the driveway there, but then going from there up basically along the skip mark up to the intersection, somewhere in there. I'm not aware of that one. No? No. Okay. So there's no issues there. Well, there's some shrinkage there that probably should be addressed. Shrinkage? Yeah, it's kind of a rough spot there. It's got a couple of sags in it. I don't know whether there was some pipes that we'd worked on in there over the years that it's kind of settled there a little bit. You can see it if you walk by it. Okay. So I'll just say it's settled. It's pretty, it's pretty obvious. Okay. And then, oh uh, yeah, one thing Chris did mention also is that when they do these jobs, VTrans will do things in the, in the state right of way, but they don't do anything that goes underneath the roadway. So like they could drop in a new drain or, or fix a drain or replace it if necessary, but they won't put in a new pipe, uh, even if it's needed for this kind of job, because all they're doing is, you know, putting another layer of pavement over it, looking to dig it up. But we did talk about the obvious thing point, which is that uh, if there is something that needs to be replaced that goes underneath the ro roadway, um, it would be best to find out now <laughs> rather than later. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and then the last one I have is is the perennial one where uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of the the new park um, or something connected with Brook Street Brook. I'm not really clear about 
where the problem comes from there. Except that all the water runs down, drains down there and maybe doesn't have a place to go. So I, a better description of that would be. Well, that was a, there was a pretty significant sinkhole. They actually had a steel plate in Route 100 for um, for a month or two um, a couple years ago when that that had caved in, and I believe they did a bunch of repair to that um, at that time. So uh, it's um it's interesting that would that should show up on their their list of problems. Well, maybe that's the sinkhole that Chris was talking about. Um, he he wasn't really clear about where it was. So is that sinkhole still a problem? Uh, no, they they repaired that. Okay. There's one down by the park now. That's um, and that that pipe then just dumps into the um, the um, that creek there. It doesn't um, you know, that's that that's the terminus of that that's drainage. The swale is that the brook it it dumps into, or is there yeah, a right swale? The brook. No, there's no swale. It just jumps dumps just just um downstream of the bridge. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, so they're saying they will, they're not doing any improvement of that infrastructure in terms of adding, um, adding um, um, drains. Well, he didn't say that specifically. Uh, I think he was starting out by saying, well, let's take a look at things and see if there's some things we can do. You know, you also, <laughs> that, you know, a certain amount of this is going to be the town responsibility. And I said, yeah, we understand that, but if there was a way to cooperate um, in some way, because a lot of these problem areas are in the state right of way, then we want to find out what can be done. So, I mean, it's probably like, don't expect too much, but they'll give it a try. Yeah, well, we should keep keep bugging them about it. I mean, it's yeah. usually not until all of a sudden they have to put a steel plate in the middle of Route 100 that they really pay attention to it. But yeah. Yeah. So should we uh, uh, take a look at these here with Cooter or possibly walk through them? Yeah, I think we should definitely go see yeah. them. Yeah. So Get Frank, do you want to, you, you, me and Cooter? Would that work? Yeah, that's okay. fine. And are there any other sites that uh, you know about that I might have missed? Or Well, not that wouldn't include adding drains, adding um, drains to the system. You know, yeah. I mean, there is... Um, we have a lot of issues. Um, there is um, the storm drain that's um, <laughs> just at the the crosswalk going down to the school that um, drains into a pipe that kicks out that bank. That pipe oh, yeah, is, yeah. is separated, and now it's eroding um, pretty significantly. There was a um, there's a swale down at the bottom of that hill that those th that pipe was originally fed into. And mm -hmm. now that pipe is broken in the middle, and it's it's eroding that bank um, pretty pretty good. That's something okay. that um, we had pointed out them to them. Uh, was it the state or was it the? Um, um, oh, the stormwater for the, the stormwater, stormwater master water. plan. Right, yeah. the stormwater master plan. I know they yeah. spray painted the you know mark that spot, but that's that's. Um, that's not showing a problem in the roadway, but it is an issue. Um, you know, back to bank there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's probably not something that they would consider as affecting their their skim coating the road. No. Probably not. But we might as well tell them everything you know that yeah. we have, and maybe they'll come up with some other ideas for us. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That that's all I have. All right. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. It's um. A process working with the state on stuff like this. Yeah, well, I have to say, I, you know, they've been very responsive at times. We know that, like with Bethel Mountain Road and all that, uh, <coughs> are pulled in a lot of different directions. On the other hand, I was a little frustrated not hearing back from anyone, um, just to know that we were in touch and that they knew we had concerns until I contacted uh, Rita Cito. And then she just sent a friendly email to VTrans and all of a sudden there were like six people on this email saying, hey, what's going on? You know, uh -huh. we're a little flustered by it. And, I you know, I just were, had to read. Yeah. Yeah. When I talked to Chris, he's like, oh, we'd really appreciate it if you just came to us instead of going to the, the planning commission because then it gets more complicated, but it's yeah, I, well, the planning I, commission. Yeah. It's, it's good to know that I, you know, I'm not looking to, we're, we're not looking to get them, you know, in trouble or anything. No. 
One, one question he did ask, and I didn't have an answer for, he asked, well, you had these problems ongoing for a while. Why didn't you talk to the guys at the state garage facility? And I said, I, I didn't really know. Um, you know, there's nothing I'm going to say to him about it, but I was just kind of curious. Hmm. Hmm. I, um, I never thought really that that was the, the initial direction to go. They would usually yeah. send, uh, you know, work on instructions from their higher ups, not making yeah. decisions on their own. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Um, thank you. Um, we don't have um, Tony here to talk about the library at all. Um, I am here. I don't know why that's not. Oh, I see. You're just called Brenda. <laughs> yes, all because right, of right. her computer, I guess. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you have you got any reports for us? And do you have any input about the, the drainage out in front of the library? Yeah, I'm glad that you're talking about that because that has been bad for a long time. And, uh, and it is dangerous. And slippery and miserable for people to get through. So yeah, that's a good thing. I was also glad that you uh, are putting money into the building maintenance fund, apparently. Uh, you're trying. Yeah, you're trying, that's good. Mm -hmm. And let's see, as far as the library is going, it's, uh, we're still doing uh, porch pickup and we have a trustees meeting uh, tomorrow afternoon at 545. And that's of course on this thing. Okay. On this thing, meaning the Zoom thing. <laughs> the Zoom thing. Yeah. The Zoom thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so I'm going to move on to the, the first item on the new business, which is the approval of the 2021 first class license and outside consumption permit for Maple Soul. And I guess outside consumption is because they have the porch there. Um, I guess this is they're anticipating um, perhaps being able to move away from the takeout only, but I guess we will see. So I, I have um, no problems with approving that. You, how about you two? No problem. No, I'd, I'd move we approve. Um, a second. Oh, sorry. All yep. in favor? Aye. All in favor. Yep. Yeah, Martha? I'm sorry. I was just speaking of Maple Soul. I don't know if you saw the article I had in the paper this past week about what Maple Soul and CV Oil are doing to help people in the area. Um, Maple Soul, the whole month of January, 5% uh, of their sales, the money is going to go to CV Oil, and CV Oil is going to use it to give credit to customers who are having trouble, um, you know, who are needy and, and um, to help them pay for their heating bills. Yeah. So I thought that was really nice that to, you know, there's been a lot of people helping each other out during this hard time, you know, and um, it, it was nice to hear about that too when I, when they called me. No, yeah, that's great. We're, I'm lucky to have them. So. Yeah, that's the silver lining to the cloud. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so now to the, um, the piece on the agenda that's um, taken the most amount of work from the Budget and Finance Committee is the approval of the fiscal year 22 town budget. Um, it's, um, so it's, um, it's, this will be, um, this does not include voted articles um, like the WERVA library recycling and reserve funds or appropriations. Um, which would amount to $167,344, 167,344. Um, they're not part of the budget and will be voted in addition to the budget. So the, um, we're looking at um, the total fund expenditures for the operating expenses of $1,095,483 of which $766,670 shall be raised by taxes. Um, and this results in, um, Greg, what was the final um, increase on the, the tax rate? We kept it under 3%, right? You're muted. Hey, Greg, you gotta, you're muted. I think it's around 2.28. 2.28, yeah. 
which is um, so of course this is the the um, just the municipal aspect of the taxes. It's the school taxes that really um, wield the big hammer and have the big effect on their taxes. So we have um, yet to see what what that's going to happen with that, but. Um, I um, do we need to approve that or just present that? That's no, so I, okay. I, I guess I would move to um, move to approve that um, setting of the the budget and the uh, amount due to be raised by taxes for fiscal year 2022. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. And thank you, everyone. Um, for their hard work on actually I found the zoom platform made it a little easier to navigate that and, and Greg that. having us all look at the same <laughs> piece of paper on the screen and we're all on the same same page that, that was very helpful so um thank you all for for your work on that yeah yeah I agree June yeah much easier <laughs> yeah. okay um, and we don't have to go out in snowy cold weather <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Not that it's been that terribly snowy or cold yet, but knock on wood. Yeah. Um, so um, an, another agenda item on new business is to appoint Becky Klein to the vacant planning commission position. And um, we're um, lucky to have her join the team. She's um, been around and has a lot of um, knowledge about the town, and I think she'll be an asset to the, the planning board. So I'd, I'd move to appoint Becky to that vacant position. A second that. Yeah, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, is she replacing someone or has this been vacant? No, she's replacing, um, we've had a, a, a couple people step out. Joan Pontius has stepped back and um, Eric um, Bowman has stepped off of it. So we had, um, yeah, had a, a need for for more, more energy there. And Chris Mayer filled Eric Bowman's spot. Right, right. All right, and they've been around for a long time, so thank you for yeah, that. For they you. had been, put a lot of time in there, yeah. Okay, um, so Catherine, you wanted to um, to chat some about the, the, um, the status of the high school building? Well, I wanted uh, to know what the budget committee final thinking about, you know, the possibility of the town acquisition, whether they were intending to put any funds towards that potential. I also wanted to get an update from Pat who met with Ethan today to know where the negotiations are between the school board and the select board because we haven't had an update. And it's important that the committee I've been working on be in the loop in terms of conversations that are going on with the powers that be, i.e. the select board and the school board. Pat, you want to handle that? Sure, I did have a meeting this morning at 10 o'clock. It was the first meeting uh, uh, to have any type of discussion about the building. So uh, we've all been in the dark uh, up until this morning. Um, the only point of the meeting today was to submit the preliminary subdivision lines for the property, physical divvying up of the property. Um, they want to keep that confidential at this time because it's preliminary, so it's not until they uh, that they Is anyone else having trouble um, hearing, hearing Pat? I can't, I can't hear you, Patty. Maybe turn off your video, you'll get more bandwidth. Here comes the Green Bay Packer cheese head. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> my team. Um, is that better? Is that better? That's better. I think so, right. yeah. Um, so we had a meeting this morning, and the purpose of the meeting was to submit the preliminary uh, lot line adjustments for the subdivision of the property. Um, no decisions were made today. I'm not, I don't have the authority to make any decisions on my own. Um, in order for the school board to continue down the path of a wastewater permit for the secondary septic system, 
um, they need to submit the actual lot lines. So uh, one hand needed to take care of the other. Um, I have that in hand and we will have an executive session at the end of this meeting to discuss the, the, the proposed lines, how they're giving up the property. Um, and then um, we will discuss um, whether or not they're going to bring it to the zoning board, which I'm sure that you know they probably will. And um, if we can approve, if we can approve the way the lot lines are adjusted on this new proposal, uh, then they can go to the next level on getting a, a secondary septic system. Um, they still have a lot of work yet to do. Um, oil tanks and, and uh, removing their systems from our building if we take it. And um, so it's, it's a very slow process for them. Um, and they, you know, we talked about how we still have much to do um, and um, they, they know it. And um, that's, that's all we had for a discussion today. It, it wasn't a big major decision-making Thing. I, I cannot do that on my own. Right. Just wanted to have uh, information updated. <laughs> I remember at one point you actually uh, questioned the need for executive session on this since we're not negotiating a sale price. So why, why is it necessary to go into executive session about these property boundaries? Their attorney asked if we could keep it confidential for this initial uh, show and tell of the lot lines. When they present the, the lot lines and um, they, they want it to be final. So once we approve it, then it can become public knowledge and um, the question gate can open. Yeah, I have a question, this is Dick. Um, what's your best guess about when the property would be available for acquisition. In other words, if you know some oil millionaire came in from Abu Dhabi and put down a bunch of money and wanted to buy it, or you know, I'm just trying to get a sense when all the, the process is completed, the process that's underway right now, just to get a sense of timing. I don't understand the question. I'm just saying no sooner. Because you're acting because that would be a no commercial sale. All I'm saying is I'm asking when the process of the division of property and, and its availability for acquisition by anybody, whether it's a town or anybody else would be available. It's gotta be approved by the zoning board and they have a time schedule on that. So it's whatever they have to present it to the zoning board. The zoning board's gotta rule it and uh, and go from there. And I'm not sure what, the, what it entails for time-wise. It's, it's not a, a huge amount of time, but it is some time. So they'll have issues with that, I'm sure. So um, we'll just, it's up to them. They got to go through the process. Okay. Well, they also have raise an uh, underground oil tank, which they haven't even started that process. They had a discussion with a contractor and that's all they've done about that. So that would need to happen as well. Um, if the underground oil tank is stable um, that would be fine and dandy, but um, it's been underground since the 70s. So um, if it has any type of seepage or a pinhole of uh, oil leaking down there, that, that's probably going to take another couple months to resolve. So following up on uh, what Dick and Frank just said, before it goes up to any kind of commercial sale, the town would have to refuse acquisition. Is that correct? Because we get first, we get the first offer of a dollar, right? We have first right of refusal. Yeah. That's right. So what is the um, attitude of the select board right now about that option? Opposed. The, I know. Opposed. Yes, I am. You, but you're one of three. You're one of three right. people. But I am opposed. Do you, could you go on record as to why? Yes, there's only three options there, Catherine, to my knowledge. There's one to keep it as a school and it's still gonna cost us a hell of a lot of money. The other is 
put it on the tax rolls and tax it by somebody if they're going to use it for a commercial property. And the third one is to wreck it, tear it down. That's right. Well, there's, for example, there's the auditorium there, and there's all kinds of value to the town. It, in my doesn't opinion. matter. We can't afford it. In your opinion, you look at right. you look at in our Frank, budget, and Frank's you can't opinion. afford it. Yeah, yeah. There is, um, I guess, the fourth the fourth option, which would be um, um, is the bigger challenge and has the possibility of um, a more creative use of it is for the town to take. Um, possession of it and facilitate uh, a, a reuse of it in some way that is going to support the town and, and help that some um, there's a lot of unknowns there and that's um and um, my take on it is that um, nothing to be rushing into um, there's a lot of in terms of the committee working on trying to come up with a reasonable proposal to the town about what the building could be used for. Um, they need more time. This is not something you put together right away. You asked earlier, did the budget committee um, put anything in the budget to potentially support the building? And, and we did not because it's, um, and we're, we're scrounging to just keep the budget as, um, as stable as we can. And there was no guarantees that um, this is going to happen that soon, and that's um, so we we did not put twenty thousand dollars in the budget to anticipate buying the building. That's not saying that that couldn't happen, but you've heard Frank's um, feelings on it, and it's um, it's a complicated thing. Um, there's a lot up in the air. The uh, whole issue of um, the Stockbridge requesting to uh, a vote to demerger throws a whole bunch of balls in the air and we're not um they they don't have the power to um force that demerger if rochester doesn't vote to support that option but if all of a sudden we, we were um the whole school was thrown back in our lap then i think we would reevaluate the the situation with that building in a, in a different light so it's um it's I, the the pressure to make decisions right away, I think, are, are um, there is a lot of resistance to that. Well, that's why Vin, uh, Vic is asking for a projected deadline by which you think that the building will be a, a formally uh, uh, offered to the uh, select board, and which and and when the select board has to make a decision. I mean, nobody wants to 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 spin their wheels in working. And this committee has put a lot of effort in it. And it sounds to me from, you know, that Frank, you know, has just summarily made up his mind because nobody has proven to him of another option. But certainly there are other options. And as we've gone ahead and started to explore uh, funding options and so forth, I think we really need to have a lot more confidence than what I'm hearing tonight about from the select board that in fact there is a potential repurposing. We've always said that you know, the school could still be uh, used for education. This school was closed for this school year because of the pandemic and the pandemic, now that the vaccinations have been rolled out, could potentially, you know, be in person again and the building be used because I do believe there's a greater vote from Rochester than there is from Stockbridge in terms of where the level of the building is, usage. So I feel like whatever the size of this group in Stockbridge is, Rochester is a bigger voting block than Stockbridge. And why, why is it that suddenly, you know, we're being squeezed into this corner about this building? Now, why is that happening? Why are we like being put into some sort of corner about it? Well, that's it exactly. And then to, to try and push the issue um, into to a situation that is not properly unfolded and has not been properly explored. It's not, um, there's a lot of resistance to that. When you say properly explored, what do you mean properly? Uh, properly, I mean, where some realistic and, and clear um, offerings about what, you know, what could happen, you know, what, what's, you know, not just um, we would like to do something, but we would like to do this. You know, well, that's what we are working on. Right. That's what we are working on. Yeah. But what is the point of working on this? And 
pulling in, you know, state agencies and funding sources if in fact you guys aren't even giving us, you know, anything in terms of like the work that we're doing? Are we just spinning our wheels out here? I, I understand that we, we formed the committee, you're on the committee to present to us potential uses of what could happen with the buildings. So aren't we kind of waiting on the committee to answer our question, which well, is why thing, we ask. It's, done, it, it's, it's a good question, Pat. And I think what it's done is in collaboration, right? So yeah. there's three entities here, right? And two of them have legal authority, the school board and the select board. We are a volunteer group who's been working in coordination and collaboration with the powers that be trying to get funding and people and so forth all organized to actually go forward to create a repurposing uh, concept, a proposal. But if Frank has already made up his mind that it's not even possible and, and uh, you know, Duna is saying something like, you know, proper, I, I, I guess I'm not feeling the confidence of the select board that, that, you know, there's credibility in the work that we're doing. Oh. Well, it's um, it, it's still a long ways out. No matter what happens, it's That's, a ways out. So, yeah. what is a ways I out, Frank? Well, give me a, a, we, an idea. I don't know, that. Catherine. It's a whole process. It has to go through. It's up. The ball sh is in the hands of the school board, and they have to do what they need to do, subdivide it, and then we figure it out from there. We need to have voter approval to even think about this because it is gonna be a massive undertaking financially. And I don't care if you get grants for this or anything else. That building's been there for over 50 years and we haven't put any, any money into it at all. And now it's gonna come due where it's gonna need a lot. It's gonna need a roof. It's gonna need many things. The outside doors are all gone. The sills are needing work. There's just a lot of stuff that's gonna to need to be done to that. And I don't see where the money's coming from. And if you put it right down and you get grants for all of this stuff, you're not going to get grants for the maintenance. And it's just going to be a burden on the community. And I don't see us being a landlord. I just don't see it. It's just like too the, much. If, if I might, the, the notion of the repurposing committee is to come up with a proposal that would be self-sustaining, that there would be programs that generate revenue that would be desirable um, for uh, grant giving organizations. We haven't got the whole picture yet. And you know, no, the no. pandemic has, has just, uh, you know, made it very, very difficult to have meetings and get input and you know, do all the things you would ordinarily do. My, my primary concern is around time availability. In other words, is, is the school board gonna call the question before we can come up with a reasonable proposal? Um, that's my primary concern. And mine too. I mean, and, and as of tonight, I just, I want a clarity on that point. What are we looking at? And it sounds as though nobody knows what we're looking at in terms of time. And we are in a pandemic. I mean, even if we created the best programs, we are still limited by the pandemic in terms of actually offering things, getting people in place. We're talking about a place for congregation at a time when people can't congregate. Right. And so right. that's, that's hamstrung us, you know, I mean, Dune, you have the, you know, the building down the block that you're going to call the Bellamont Inn. How, how long has it taken you to pull the funding to get that thing up and going so that it's a viable business, right? It takes time. You certainly, you certainly do understand what it means and who you have to meet with to get the the funding committed and there's all different things about funding yes there's funding for renovations and changes and capital improvements but there's also you know you need you need regular income for people who are actually going to use the space whether that's an adult day child care maker space whatever that is you're going to have to establish a, a, an ongoing funding source and we are talking to people about those very very specific things but if we don't have the confidence of the select board that you would actually like to see a Gifford Medical Center adult a day in there, which would be good revenues, right? Or a child care center, which would be solid revenues. I mean, we're looking at things like that right now and talking to people to, 
try to get commitments. But if we have a select board that is saying impossible is not going to happen, it feels like it's sort of putting a little cloud over anything that we're trying to muster and lift. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to hear a, at least a little bit of optimism to kind of inject that into the work we're doing. It's important that we have that. I would just want to say for the record that Gifford has not indicated that they would partner with us to not yet. daycare. Well, don't even say not yet. That's that's not even, you know, for discussion. No, but, there, but, but there's facts not that we know about the adult day and more facts that we know about the aging population. Yes, but don't assume, and I don't want it to be on the record that... We're uh, not putting it on the record, Vic. I'm just saying where those conversations have started. No. Negative. That's we're only asking them for some help in figuring out feasibility. That's it. And I want to be very clear about that. Well, then I've misunderstood your, your conversations. Well, I apologize they, for that. Maybe I apologize if there's bad communication there. But yeah, it's, it's all, we're all kind of caught in a little bit of a catch 22 because you know, where everyone's looking to everyone else to, to give the clarity of like, okay, this is what's going to happen. And this it's, it's a it's a long process you you ask how long it's 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 been five six years we've been working on this project next door here so it's not something where um the select board has the power to say this is going to awesome we're going to buy this building and make something cool happen that's not the job of a select board to select board but we are here to support the town and in, to in, invest in in things that have vision and that will we be positive for the town but we are I, legally we we cannot just be a landlord you know it has to be something that is is involved with the town so it, if if perhaps it's a, a transitionary stage but you know I, I i don't think we should tear the building down you know i i personally think it, it has um the potential for something creative and and you know more than just becoming the town garage but it's to to be able to answer the question is like you know yes we're we're gonna whatever it is something's gonna happen and we put money in the budget for it we, we couldn't do that you know? I, I understand yeah. that so i think we all understand that right now because of the the uh, economy and uh, how it's been affected by the pandemic there's a lot of uncertainty across the board about a lot of things right now yeah. and in some level i think it's it's unfair that we're being pushed up against the wall to make decisions at a time of great uncertainty. I agree. And, and we, um, we pay into the school budget and the cost of keeping that building last year was 0.9% of the school budget. So, oh, I think so. in a way, it, it seems a little artificial that we're being driven to a decision at a time when, when uh, somebody said earlier that we're not even clear whether Stockbridge is going to attempt to demerge, you know, and then what the building will come back to us anyway, right? Right. So, 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 so where is this push coming from? I mean, what is the percentage of the voting population that has got our backs up against the wall about having to make a decision at a time when there is so much uncertainty? Political pressure from the Stockbridge people on the school board. I mean, uh, the, uh, there's a resentment for every nickel that is spent on anything having to do with Rochester, and that they're putting that on the school board, and they're under a lot of heat. It's a very complicated and difficult situation, and and I understand your position entirely, Catherine. But you know, I think Frank is kind of courageous to, to just kind of make this absolute point because the numbers are very serious. And, and that doesn't mean it'll never happen. It doesn't mean anybody's saying no, but, but it, I, I'm gratified to see Frank just being realistic about it because it's, it's very expensive. And, and the budget process we just went through shows how thin the ice is. Yeah. That doesn't mean it won't happen, but it's very complicated and it should be done very carefully and slowly as Dune is saying, I think. Careful is, is right. I agree with careful, but, uh, but I also do not like, if there is a small group of people that are is driving this, because I don't even know what kind of numbers we're talking about, even sort of pushing the school board uh, towards a decision because it's become such an unpleasant uh, and, and chronic complaint, you know, I, I just, I question the fairness of it. That's all. I question whether it's a, a reasonable representation of the voting public in two towns. Well, the fairness of it and, and the wisdom of it, because as the, uh, at the, last school board meeting that I sat in on and the, um, the, the C 
superintendent shared the information about the tax rates for the individual towns and what they projected would be with a demerger and and regardless of what happens to the high school the tax rates for both towns would go up with the demerger so i think this drive to to um demerge the schools is is short-sighted and and um and there's you know this the building has been brought forth as this um this you know topic of of um concern and 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 a, a lightning rod for this um the force for for whatever that animosity is but it's 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 kind of a red herring there's there's more at play here and and it's um I, I think that we've been playing a waiting game. There's no question about it. There's no sense in trying to jump in and say, we know what's going to happen and this is what we're going to do. But uh, we'll see what happens at the, the vote in Stockbridge. And that, that does not determine that we will demerge, that it will just force the town of Rochester to then take up a vote in response to that. And the um, more that people are educated and understand the ramifications of what that vote is, the, the you know, we'll see what happens. But it, that's that's why we're all kind of in limbo and, and trying to work towards, you know, an understanding, you know, what could happen with the building? What will it really cost to support the building? What what creative forces could could rise to, to want to do something with the building? We, um, you know, I still wonder if it's not going to be a, an asset for if we move into a a time in the future where increased distance is required. I mean, the, the outdoor tent thing is not that sustainable, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and this may be a big asset for the school to have a lot of room. I don't know, but I, I think that rushing this to decisions is a mistake. Yeah. And, being, and being pushed by, by a relatively small group, I really think is, is also a mistake. I mean, it seems like the building has become a symbol of of something, a bad marriage or something like that, but it really yeah. isn't the building. It's a symbol for something else. Now, even though that the building's on a path to resolution one way or another, they, you know, there's still a lot of anger in the, among some Stockbridge folks. So I think it is a red herring in a lot of ways. And I think state of limbo that we, that, that we are, have been in for the last few months have been a gift of the committee to, to get some work done. Um, saying that uh, you need another year to come to any conclusions at all. Um, perhaps you need to throw more uh, committee members at this. Uh, may, you probably need some help so that you can, uh, so we can make a little bit faster progress. I, I, that's what I'm hearing here. Um, I'd also want to mention that the, the building is an asset to the town for simply for the, the section with the auditorium where we've always held our town meetings when we didn't have a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And our theater group and other organizations have held uh, things there. I mean, that auditorium is a real asset to the town. Yeah, it's not cut and dried by any means, no. Well, I also feel that, you know, yes, this committee is a volunteer committee and it outgrew, it grew from the InVision group. And the reason that the In, or one of the principles in the InVision group was a recognition of the elder demographics of this town. And I've become pretty much an expert on the elder demographics of this town as being the, you know, the senior advocate for 23 years. And I got to tell you guys, we got to bring young people in. We have got to bring young families in. Otherwise, who's going to get your services? You try right now to get a plumber. You try to get an electrician. We need young people. And that school is a possibility. That building is a possibility. I would like it all to be education, quite frankly. But I'm just saying, we can't lose sight of what we need to put into place to bring young families into this town. And I know Patty feels that way too, because she said that. And it's just, we can't just settle on being an older town, afraid of our taxes going up. And I guess that's all I have to say. And thank you for the time. Yeah, no, thank you. I did hear that a, a number of new families have moved into town via, um, in the past few, uh, past six months. The school Perhaps you know, plus a, do a, something good and, and bring uh, more people that are living full time into our town. Yeah. I heard that there were new kids at the school. That's just what I was going to say. So that's good news. So, you know, hurry up and wait right 
I mean, there's there's pieces of the puzzle, you know, floating around, and they're getting more information. But it's it's um, as Patty, you know, chatting with Ethan this morning, it's not, you know, it's not happening next week. It's not happening next month. It's not happening this winter. And this is um, this is a big project. So um, so thank you for your energy um, on the committee to try and come up with uh, envisioning of what could happen and, and how it could be turned into an asset and, and turn oh. it, it's um it's um it's not not easy but it's um it's what we have to work with right now and um hey something something to do right <laughs> Get us off the streets. Yeah, yeah. You know, not going out to eat, not going to movies. You might as well work on on other creative projects. <laughs> yeah. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to say about that that issue? Jeff, I, I just add that if if the town were considering selling the the facility, then it would be about three thousand dollars for a commercial appraisal of the building and I've been quoted about 10 grand for a realtor to uh, to market and, and list and sell it. And, and that's something else that Patty has said that I've agreed to. It's just like, why doesn't the town sell the building if the repurposing ideas don't come to the kind of fruition that they need, then at least the town would get the money for the building. Yeah, well, yeah. when it comes down to it, that'll be something to consider. <laughs> You know, um, but it's not ready to be sold right no, now. No, but yep. you know, yep. and I but, do yeah. understand that the town has to vote on any kind of repurposing idea. And I would only want it that way too. But um, in terms of an asset to the town, it is an asset to the town. And even if the town decides to put it on the commercial market, that's still an asset to the town, whatever that would sell for, so. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, in the end, we'll all get schooled by this experience, won't we? Yeah. Well, well, it's important to work together. It is. It is. Um, get that. Um, and really, I think um, that was pretty much everything that we had on the agenda for tonight. But you guys have an executive session to discuss yeah. uh, the, the property line divisions for this particular subject, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, um, can, and is that anything that you'll be making a dis, does? I'm sorry to interrupt, but making it's probably not <laughs> based okay. on this conversation we just had. Okay. It's just this information, Jeff. Can you send me what you read from at the beginning, the Act uh, 92? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need I need that language for the uh, tri town. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Leonard. I will. Let me um, I'll um, find that. It's um. It's a whole, you know, couple of pages, but you can summarize the, the most important aspects of it is, and I'll send that to you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. That uh, one word, hard to say. Hmm? It's got that one word that we can't pronounce well. Oh, um, that, um, oh, and it's so fun to say though, contemporaneously. Yeah, we all need to be able to <laughs> contemporaneously, um, in, in interact and um, contribute to the meeting. Um, let me just make a note. Okay. You said it very nicely, do. Yeah, I have a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for um, coming and have a um, good evening. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thank all you. Right. Bye now. Thank you. Bye, all.